Now, Objective-C properties and retain and release. When you use properties in your classes, they're very handy, um, but they hide some of the memory management code, which, well, of course, once you understand what's going on, then uh, it's very helpful, but it can be a little confusing. So most object properties are declared like this, at property, and then it's declared to be non-atomic, and a retain property, and this is a NS string called a string. So non-atomic we won't talk about, but when you say that this, is, this property is a retained property, that means that when the property is set, the value that's, that's being assigned to that property is going to get retained. So when you synthesize the getter and setter for this property, this is the code, approximately the code you get. You get a setter, set a string, which pass, takes an NS string, and uh, you get an accessor, a string. Now the accessor is very straightforward, it just returns the reference to the string. But let's look at what happens with the setter. First of all, it does a test. It says, is x the new value for the property being passed into the setter? Is x different from the current value of the property? If you're setting a property to the same value it already has, then the setter doesn't have to do anything, and so it, it skips the rest of the code. That's what that test is for. Then the next thing that happens is uh, the old value of the property gets released. So uh, the second thing that happens is the new value for the property, x, that's being passed in, gets retained. And then the third thing that happens is uh, the property value gets assigned to the new value x. So what's all this for? This means that when you use a retain property and you're setting the value of that property, the setter method is going to make sure that the old value that was in the property, the old object gets released and then the new object that you're passing in gets retained, its retain count goes up. What this means is the old object that was inside of this property, when it gets released, it, in many cases right then it will be deleted from memory so uh, it won't be a memory leak and then the new value, its retain count goes up by one meaning that it will stick around um, as long as it's assigned to this property. So, uh, dialloc, uh, also known as destructors, if you're familiar with C++. A class which is doing um, memory management is going to have a dialloc method. The dialloc method is where you get to finally release all the properties and internal state of that object, all of its component uh, objects. And so, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, if we're looking at the dialloc for the class we saw on the previous slide, then uh, we have to release the a string um, instance variable of the of the class so that that gets cleaned up when this object goes away. And uh, you can actually do that another way as well. You could have said uh, self dot a string equals nil. So if you set a value, or if you set a property, a retained property, to nil, then before it assigns the property to nil itself, it's going to release the old value of the property. Uh, the other thing that you should remember in your dialogs is that that's the last step is to call dialog in the superclass. Um, this is um, easy to forget, uh, and it's something which can ca definitely catch you out. If you don't call call dialog to the superclass, then in fact the object doesn't really ever get deleted from memory, even though the retain count goes to zero. Um, so if you're debugging through your program and you're looking at a memory leak you have, you could do that with the instruments tool. Um, you can find that you have a leaking object and when you when you print out the retain counts on the objects, you find that the retain count has gone down to zero, but yet mysteriously 
those objects are not really getting deleted ever. That's probably because you forgot to call dialog uh, of the superclass. Just a quick mention of uh, memory bugs. So if you get your memory management code wrong, you'll have memory bugs. And there's basically two kinds, two fundamental kinds here. If you release an object that's already been deleted, then the program will crash. And you'll see this message on the um, debugging, uh, on the terminal output from either the simulator or on the iPhone itself. You'll see this in Xcode. It will say program received signal um, exec bad access. So if you see that, it means that you're releasing an object too many times um, and the object being released uh, the, for the last time has already been deleted from memory. It's also possible uh, that you could see that message when you're passing any message to an object which has already been deleted, but um, it's unpredictable. Sometimes when you access an object that's already been deleted, in fact, it still works. Uh, which is what makes memory management bugs so difficult. So the the other kind of memory management bug is when you forget to, to write the code to send a release or an auto release to an object that you should have. And this is the source of memory leaks uh, in your iPhone app. So of course if you're not releasing or auto releasing an object when you should, its retain count can never go to zero so it can never get deleted. If you have um, a very small, short-running program, then having a few memory leaks here or there is not the end of the world. It's not that the objects really stay around forever. It's just they stay around until the program itself terminates. However, if you have a longer-running program or a program which loops over some code which many times that has a memory leak, then uh, the amount of memory that your app is using will grow and grow and grow and eventually the app will crash. Uh, on, a, on a phone, when um, if you've been using email and Safari and uh, text messages and all the other things the phone has, when you run your own app on that phone, you only really have about 12 megabytes to play with until uh, memory starts running short. Now you can definitely allocate more than 12 megabytes in an iPhone app, but when you do, the operating system has to start shuffling memory around and at that point it will start passing a message to your app asking it to release memory and if uh, if you don't respond and clean up some memory then uh, the operating system might just terminate your app which of course is a crash really so just to recap this basic rule of thumb if you remember this then uh, you'll, you'll get on the right track with your memory management. So any object reference anywhere in the program at any time, is it in the auto-release pool or not? This is actually pretty simple. If you made an object yourself using a call to alloc, new, copy, or mutable copy, then the object is not in the auto-release pool. Every other object you get from any other way is in the auto-release pool. Now, when you're writing your own code, you have to stick to this convention. You have to follow this convention. So if you're ever going to return an object which you've made, then you add it to the auto-release pool so that for the code that you're returning it to, to, this part of the convention is true. That's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, you can see more tutorials and programming lessons at my website, markj.net.